everyone know, January the 30th, Miss U.S. 8th of 2019 plunged to her death on her 30th birthday, which I found kind of coincidental, but then that's me, that she plunged on, the th on her 30th birthday and on the 30th day. But um, it appears that she was suffering from a high functional depression, which is an unofficial term used to describe individuals who experience depression, but are able to keep up with much of their daily life, performing right. at high level, people never know what they're going through. Now, right. she was a, um, a lawyer, attorney, plus she was one of the hosts on the TV, on the um, extra, extra show. Right. Uh-huh. So, you know, to look at her from the outside, one would think that she had everything going on right. But right. apparently, she had things going on in her life that not even her mom or her closest friends knew that she was battling with. As a result of that, we lost a very, very inspirational black strong woman who was looked upon by many young girls as an inspiration. And I hope that they don't stop allowing that to, for her to be their inspiration because we all fall weak. The right. thing of it is because she was so very strong, nobody recognized her weakness. Right. No, do you have any? I'm gonna post a picture so y'all can see. But no, do you have any thoughts on this before I give my take? It's sad. It's it's it's, it's sad because um her biggest confidant, her biggest supporter, which was her mom, who went on an interview a couple of days afterward, um, said she knew of something because she told her not too long ago, but she didn't know to what extent. Right. Um. It's one of those things that, you know, you can speak on it, but if it really happens to you, can we really speak on it, you know? Um, all I would say is to those out there who's, who are experiencing depression um, and you feel like you have no one to talk to, right. um, talk to a stranger or right. talk to somebody who's very, very close to you who ain't going to judge. And most times that's our parent, right? Most times... Our parents can kind of sympathize with us um, in a way that we didn't think they could because we're part of them and they're a part of us. Um, also, if that doesn't work and, and, and you don't no longer have your parent, reach out to one of these hotlines. E even if it's a hotline, I don't even have anything to do with what you're going, what you're going through. They have trained professionals who are there to comfort you and get you to a point of safety or try to get you some sort of help. And that's the, the National Suicide Prevention Life um, Lifeline. Um, for those that need, for, for those that may be going through this, the number is 1-800-273-8255. You know, if you, if you don't get answers there, call the domestic violence hotline. And I'm just throwing out different hotlines because there's always, they, they always were said, the best thing to do is talk to somebody in your, in your lowest moment, your deepest crisis. Just being able to talk about it, expressing your pains, your sorrows, or your emotions, and just having somebody listen can be really therapeutic. So if you're if you're going through anything like that, um, please reach out to somebody. If it's a friend, family member, or one of those hotline crisis um, centers um, to get help, because um, as much as as much as that that burden is us. We think it's just about us, and nobody is going to feel any type of way if we're not here anymore. Right. We do. And share a little story is I tip I, I um struggle with depression, um, and a lot of it came on a little bit later in life. And one of the um one of my symptoms with MS is depression, and I take uh, some medicine for that um, because of the lesions on my brain and things like that. It, it, it messes with certain nerves and things like that. And depression is really real. Sometimes you don't know if you're coming or going. Um, it's hard to get up out the bed. It's hard to articulate yourself. It's hard to even verbalize to yourself what you're feeling. Right. Um, I would say in a person that's going through depression or going through anything, the, 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 the number one worst thing that we can do is push that person or try to 
put it on a scale that we understand. Right. The greatest thing that we can do is just bear a listening ear and a shoulder if they need us. And just being available at all times. If we're gonna put ourselves in those shoes of being some of being there for somebody to um be the arms that they fall into when they need help, understand what that role is. And it, it might just be a shut the hell up and say nothing. Right, just listen. It might just be grab that person and hug them as hard as you can and as deep as you can to let them know that somebody on the other side of that hug really cares about them. Right. And then two, the third thing is just always being available right. and letting them know that you're available regardless of whatever they're going through and you're not going to judge them. Right. I want to get into some of the, the details that happen with this situation. So she, she had one Miss USA. Her mom was also you know, a pageant contestant. She was Miss North Carolina. Her mom was Miss North Carolina. So this girl, Chelsea uh, Christ, was on the on the uprise. They were saying, extra was saying that she's up next to take over as far as like hosting different things, interviewing people, things like that. She was, Her star was on the rise. So she jumped out of a window in her building she she lived on the ninth floor, but she jumped out of a window on the 60th floor. So she jumped out of a window on the 60th floor, you know, and to punish her death. But the thing about it, my take on it is that I think that this may have been a situation where as though they're saying that she suffered from, you know, a high functioning depression, which is something that you're supposed to seek therapy and take meds for. But if you can see that there was, you know, no, as we know, because we weren't there, you know, we're not in her personal life. But as we know, you know, she had a, a good life. But I think that this is a case of always having to be perfect. This mm -hmm. might have, you know, took her over the edge. The fact that, you know, people look at you, you have to be a certain way. You always have to be pretty. You always have to do this. You always have to do that. And sometimes that can take a toll. And I just want the women to know that you don't always have to be perfect. <laughs> like, it's all right if you got stretch marks. <laughs> it's all right, you know, if this if this is that, you're not happy with this part. You don't always have to be perfect. And a lot of times with those women who, you know, grow up in that pageant life, they look at themselves as always being perfect, always having to be perfect. And that is a strain, you know, that could contribute. If that's not the only thing, I think that that can contribute to, you know, their depression. So before we get into um, the, the comments, do you have any more things to say on this, Katie, or no? Do y'all have any more things to add on this? Because she was only 30, and, you know, mm -hmm. it seemed as though everything, she was a beautiful girl. Everything was, you know, looking good for her so do y'all have any last questions or comments well you may i want to back back to what you said about um you know she could have had medication for her depression the type of depression that she was suffering from the high functional kind right. they said that it has not yet been recognized by the fda so they would um because of the type it is people always view her as being too strong for anything so it's not recognized right as a depression right but that kind of depression they they consider that as the same as like ppd or as pdd yeah. levels. so that one does have a medication so there is no i'm no i'm i'm just saying that since they don't with her symptoms and right. she went in with that they would they would simply tell her that she need to change her lifestyle they would they don't want to put someone like that on that type of medication because to them she don't need it now i i agree that she did need it i totally agree but psychiatrists would not have agreed right but that's what i mean we don't know if she was seeing the psychiatrist or even if she went to, to, to see if she could get meds. i don't we don't have all that information so i, I don't know but i think that that is a possibility so 
No, you want to go to the comments or you got something yeah, else? I, I want to double back on a point that you made because you spoke gospel there. Um, and ladies, that recognize this, please. But well, he said, you don't have to be on 24 hours a day. All right. Being you is the best thing. Um, and take this from us. We're men. You know, we we like what we like. And if we choose you, we choose you under all type of pretenses, right? We understand that you're going to get fly. And we understand that you're going to just have them off days when you just don't want to do nothing but chill. Right. You don't have to be on all the time. And we don't, we're not looking for you to be on. Be yourself. If we got with you, you had a few pounds and you gained even more, a, a couple of more pounds, that doesn't mean the love is lost. If, you know what I mean, your hair is not the length you wanted to be, you ain't got to add the chemicals and the products and extensions and all that to appease us because we see you in your natural, purest form, which is you. Right. Never allow anything or anyone to take away from what you are and who you are. Because right. you're going to be you forever. Right. People are going to come and go and people are going to stay. Always believe in yourself. And I know it's easier said than done. But we're altering ourselves to appease somebody else for the most part or to or to be able to fit in or to 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 break down those insecurities. You're beautiful just the way you are. And 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 you know that when you got a guy who's asking you to send him a picture and you're like, well, I ain't I ain't got no picture or I, I'm look a mess. What they say, send it anyway. Send it anyway. Send it anyway. You know why? Because I already I already am comfortable with what I seen and I I already take you as far, so just send me whatever you got. Right. I don't care if your hair is nappy all over the place, wild, because I ain't looking at the hair. I'm looking at you. Right. And we really be meaning that. <laughs> we really, truly be meaning that because we already seen what we wanted, and that's you. So Also, we have to be mindful of the pressure, you know, that society puts on all of us. To uh -huh. always chase the bag, to always win the contest, to always, you know, whatever. We have to be mindful of that pressure to not let that pressure control us. And what else was I going to say before we get into some of these comments? I wanted the bag. Like, honestly, I was going to post. I'll be wanting the bag. I was going to post. I got BBLs on sale this month right. for $49.95. But I was like, no, we don't need that. Right. Right. We, get, we cool with the flat backs, right. the flabby assies, and all that. I'm not. <laughs> I was going to start my little BBL situation. My, my found. Uh, I mean, my my LLC is already created. You know, what I mean, it's called Fat Asses Are Us, and it's only forty nine ninety five to get you a BBL. You just come here, and I got you. But I was like, nah, I ain't going to do that. Cause y'all cool. How y'all be cool? Yeah, and also, also, this is what I wanted to say. This is also a case of check on your strong friends. Check on your strong even, friends. It might seem like everything's going good. They got a good job. They're with their family, whatever, whatever. It might seem like they're not having any problems. They still might be dealing with something else. So this is also a case of check on your strong friends. T, don't you be need to be checked on sometime? All the fucking time. Even though you talk I shit. I suffer from exhaustion, and what I mean by that, I suffer from repetitive shit. Like, I don't, I hate the experience of life of being on the hamster wheel of the everyday same shit. So I, that's what I, that's one of my issues. Ex ex exhaustion. So yeah, I definitely need to check on as well. Yeah, people be thinking the strong people be to be always on point. Like shit, we don't be on point. We just make right. it look like it is. Right. Karen, right. don't you need to be checked on some time? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. My my bestie check on me daily because she, she know me. So Absolutely. yeah, you do need to um you know, we get so tough that we don't want to let anyone in to right. know that we are needy. But you need to find that one person that and, you don't have to go to that and they even, just know and, you. And sometimes it's sometimes it's easier for people to talk to a stranger than their friends because they, they don't want that judgment. So even if you have to find a, a new friend or a stranger or seek, you know, professional therapy. Yeah. Sometimes it is easier that way. Yeah, and in some way you gotta get that out. You gotta be able to talk yeah. about it. 
whatever you're going through. But let's go through some of the comments before we move on. Go through. Uh, let me see. Congratulations to Lady KC while we are going through the comments. She started her own radio show. Um, she can be heard on iHeart on Friday's T. Did you hear her track? No, I didn't hear it. Yeah, so congratulations, Lady. Oh, okay, hey, Ebony. See, there's my bestie. What up, Ed? Yeah, she called me two to three times a day. Yep. Yeah. So Ebony said the pageant life is enough to depress anybody. A lot of pressure. And Kenya said most celebrities have committed suicide that suffer from that. Yeah, it's a lot, people. Make sure you check on your strong friends. Somebody read what Angela said. I just had to deal with this the other um deal with this with a close friend of mine last week. I'm glad. She actually took the next steps to going to the hospital. Mm. Wow. All right. Let's see what's going on, people. And yeah, I tell you, in this day and time, people check on them even more. And even children, because we are living in the present time. Because I'm yeah. telling you, um, those of you who don't know, I got diagnosed with COVID on Wednesday. Now. I was blessed. I was not like Nell, um, and I know it could have been a whole lot worse. My my worst part of it all was the thought of having COVID because I truly did not have any symptoms. According to CDC, it's still in my body. I don't go back to work to Tuesday. But you know, when I when they first told me and I first saw that, um, I I was pissed. I was like, what the I, yeah, I went off on everybody. I was living. Mm -hmm. So we are living in times where you got to check on your loved ones because I truly, I truly felt alone. I didn't want anybody around me. They didn't want to come around me. And I'm like, damn, I'm right here by myself. Yeah. I Thank God I was able.